what is up guys fortune dev here so in today's video i'm going to be answering a question you guys have been asking a lot so what is an api so the textbook definition of an api is an application programming interface but what the hell does that even mean it is a way that allows your application to be able to communicate with other applications services and you don't even actually have to care how they actually build their infrastructure let me explain so when you go into a restaurant, for example, and make an order through the menu, maybe you want uh, the chicken uh, with some sides. So the waiter will go ahead and take your order to the chef who will actually go ahead and prepare the order. The waiter will go ahead and bring you the food from the chef and bring it back to your table. So in this, I know it's not the best analogy, but let's just roll with it. So in this situation, the waiter has become the link between you and the chef so you are getting the chef's expertise via the waiter and the chef can also know what exactly you need because the waiter told him your request so i know it's not the greatest but in a more practical example it would be if i was to make an android application and i needed maybe to add a map to it if i didn't have a google maps api i would actually have to provide my own map data with little or no interactivity so with all this APIs, the Bluetooth APIs, uh, the Google Maps, and all these other APIs, you can really build more scalable projects at that point. If you are new to the channel, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'm not going to leave you hanging. Let's go ahead and do a simple project where I'll be showing you how to fetch data from an API. Let's go. So let's get straight into this. So I have created an API tutorial folder right here, and I've opened it up in my Visual Studio Code editor. So if we go ahead and check out the index.html, you'll find that it's just some basic markup where I've linked the style sheet as well as the app.js. For the style sheets, nothing of course is in this particular file and neither in the app.js file. So the application we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a simple uh, movie, movie DB. We're going to be fetching data from the movie DB and displaying it in our particular website, just like this. So let's go ahead and get straight into that. So what I'm going to do, let me go ahead and close this. And I'm going to go into my text editor. Then I'm going to open this up using Live Server, which is just a Visual Studio Code extension that enables me to serve up my projects on a local host. So, and it also gives me some live reload, which is actually very essential for me to be able to make changes and see them in real time without reloading the page. So. I'm going to be using Rapid API. If you don't know about Rapid API, this is a very fantastic source that has over 250 plus unique APIs. The one we're going to be using is called Movie Database Alternative, which is a freemium. And what I mean by freemium is that it is free to a certain point. Once you hit some quota, you will start getting charged. So for me, it just says test endpoint. It must it might say on your site, subscribe to test, and you will have to input your card details it will not uh, deduct any amount for this but you do need to actually supply that payment information so let's just go ahead and get straight to it so for simplicity i'm just going to keep this simple so for the requirement required parameters this is uh what the information you need from the api kind of like we said with the menu so i'm only going to be searching for avengers endgame so this is the information i want and I want this data to be returned as a JavaScript object, which is JSON. So in Rapid API, you can go ahead and pick out right here the snippets that you want. So I'm just going to go with a, a JavaScript. So I want JavaScript and I want it to be uh, fetch. So let me just go ahead and copy this code just like this. So just click on copy code. And then just head into your text editor. Then go into your app.js file, then just go ahead and paste it right here. So basically, uh, you have made a request to the movie database asking them to give you all the data related to the search query Avengers Endgame. So let's go ahead and check out in our browser. Let's go ahead and check this out. So localhost, first right click and click on inspect you will be able to actually see that we have some information that has been sent to us. So if we go ahead and check in the console, as you can see, we have a response right here. 
and it's an in an array and i can actually see that i get all the data i need i get the poster the title the type the year etc and also the imdb id which is actually fantastic but let's go ahead and see how we can actually be able to make use of this data in our particular api which is actually it should be very simple to do so first of all let's go back into our text editor so if you do notice uh, this response is in json which is good but i need to stop console logging this so let me just get rid of that and open up these brackets so what i want to do in this case is now i want to actually be able to get this data in form of each and every object so what i'm going to do to get this happening is i'm going to create a new variable so a new constant called movies so it is actually going to go into the response and go into the search so once i have this i can actually now say movies uh, dot map then i want each and every movie so that way i can be able to get the data of each and every movie so um, i can now go ahead so basically i'm getting the data for each and every movie in this particular uh, case so let's go back to our browser and let's just give that a moment so as you can see i now have each of each and every movie in terms of the title in terms of the the poster and what's not which is more it's it's much better for me to actually work with this data so let me go back into the code editor let me go back to the code editor and let me just comment out to this line let me comment out this line so what i want to do now is i want to create a variable for all the data that i'm going to need so first i'm going to create one for the movie name so for the name so const name and that's going to be the movie dot title so next is going to be the the year so it's going to be pretty much the same thing for the year then i also want the poster so let's go ahead and do that i need the image for this so the poster is going to be moving and of course the poster So next i need um, i need the movie card so i'm going to be generating the movie card uh by actually putting all the variables that i have now into one uh, variable so so for that i'm going to call this movie card like that then in here i'm going to just do an li tag so that it will actually contain all the information the image uh the title the year and the poster so that's going to be fantastic so let me just go ahead and create this so basically now it's time to input this data from the app.js back to the dom so how i'm going to do that i'm just going to say documents dot square selector documents dot query selector then in here um, let's go into the index.html and see how we named uh, the particular div that is supposed to contain all of this data so we named that we haven't created one so let's go ahead and create a div here so let's create a div called movies Okay, so that's perfect. Once we have created that, let's head back into our app.js right here. Then what we're going to do now is the query selector is going to be movies.
yeah and we should be good to go we should be good to go just like that so now now that we have actually have this uh, stored in our movie card let's go ahead and check out if we have any response on the dom uh, so let's go back into this okay so we must have messed up in uh, html in some way so yeah so we have that all right we have data right here but i know how it looks it doesn't look that great so there's a fix for that there's something called css maybe you've heard of it that's what you can use to fix this ugly looking layout but you're not here for css this is not a css uh, tutorial so let's just go ahead and grab some styling i already have some here so let me just go ahead and grab this and if i go ahead and check that out that is looking much better let me just go ahead and change let me change uh the h1 let me give a little more style to the h1 and i'm just going to say the color is going to be white so nothing fancy just like that then let me just open that up again and as you can see move api and we have all this data so it's not it's not it's not perfect it's not perfect but you have actually just got data from a database that is not your own which is actually fantastic if you think about it and you can also go ahead and do a lot of uh, playing around with this because we actually fetched for Avengers Endgame. Maybe let's fetch for something else. Let's do. Let's do friends. Okay. So as you can see, it has fetched all the data about friends and some related movies as well. So this is literally a, a very fantastic, a very fantastic way. Uh, to work with APIs, but this is not the only way to deal with APIs. There are more advanced APIs out there, but this was just a sneak peek on how you can do it. If you got value from this video, please give it a thumbs up and go ahead and watch this video right here. It will really help you a lot. That's it for now. Peace out.